Hey everybody, welcome to RC Foam Fighters. Today I'm going to be doing a follow-up on my review of the Multiplex Funjet. I'm going to be installing an affordable 5-cell setup that includes the motor, the ESC, the 5-cell battery, and a BEC for under $90. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the components and how the installation went. First we'll uh, look at the motor. Um, I put the old motor that I had in the plane next to it just for a size comparison. Um, the original motor I had in there was a 28 millimeter motor, uh, 2350 kV turnage motor. Um, the new motor is a 36 millimeter motor. It's quite a bit larger um, and it puts out a lot more power. It's a 1450 kV motor capable of running on up to six cells. I'm going to be running it on a five cell. It's rated at 1600 watts. Um, the other motor that I had in it was rated at 480 watts, but I think I ran it as high as uh, 650 watts. So this should be quite a big difference in power on this plane. Um, it's also going to be able to turn a bigger prop, which is what I'm going to need to get this plane to go really fast. Um, I'm going to be running a 7x6 sport prop on there, um, as opposed to what I was running before was a 6x4 sports prop with the smaller motor. Okay. Um, next on the list is the ESC. Um, it's a Hobby King 90 amp ESC that has a 100 amp burst rate on it. Um, and next to that I've already got the BEC installed. It's a Turnigy 3 amp BEC that has a 5 amp burst rate on it. Um, basically you just solder the two wires from the BEC onto the leads of the speed controller, the positive to the positive and the negative to negative. Um, I had to make a short extension on the front so that it would reach the battery okay. Um, and the battery, these are new batteries that just came out from Zippy. They're Zippy uh, Flight Max 2200 milliamp 40C batteries. Um, these batteries are rated at 88 amps constant draw and they're 50C on the burst so they're over 100 amps on the burst. So those are the components that we're going to be putting into the plane which I'm hoping is going to get it to go at least 130 to somewhere 130 to 140 miles an hour. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the installation. Alright, one of the nice things about the Funjet is the motor mount will accept many different types of motors and it actually has a bolt pattern on it for 36 millimeter motors. Um, so this motor just bolts directly onto it with two bolts. Alright, because this motor is 36 millimeters and it is an outrunner motor, it's going to be a very tight fit in the fuselage and I was worried about the wires rubbing against the can so I did have to make a modification to the fuselage to get this to work right. Alright, basically what I did is I put two holes into the side of the fuselage, um, one for the wires to exit out and so they can go around the outside of the motor without rubbing against the can and then another hole in the plastic for the wires to go back into the motor. Um, this completely eliminates any chance of the wires rubbing against the can of the motor and causing some serious problems. Um, you do not want to put the wires on the inside because they will catch on the motor when it's turning and it could totally rip the plane apart. Um, so this modification is necessary in order to use this setup. And uh, Both of these holes can be made with either a hot knife or a Dremel tool. Um, before you do cut these holes in there, make sure that you test fit the motor to find out where these holes need to be. Um, otherwise you may end up with them in the wrong location. Um, they do have to fit exactly where they're supposed to be, otherwise they won't exit and enter at the right place. Um, I also did one other modification um, on the inside. I added a single layer of Henry's fiberglass weave around the inside of the fuselage to help stiffen it up around where the motor mount is. Um, again, I'm thinking this could be optional. You don't really need to do this, but I did it to add a little bit of extra strength. Um, basically what I did is I cut a piece of Henry's weave, stuck it in there, and just spread a really thin layer of finishing epoxy, which is thinner than the regular epoxy, and then let it dry. We're going to go ahead and install the equipment and see how it goes. Once you have your ESC and BEC all soldered together and the extension on there, uh, make sure to tape it up so that they're not all loose. Um, and then this is going to insert from the back of the plane towards the front. You'll probably need something to grab onto the front end to pull it through the plane to the front. Um, 
The reason we're going in through the back is because the speed controller won't fit through the past the spar from the front side. So you have to come in through the back of the plane. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install this, and then we'll be right back. All right, I have the speed controller and the VEC far enough forward so that the wires will still stick out. Um, we're going to go ahead and insert the motor and bolt it in with the wires sticking all the way through. And then we'll connect them together and push them back through the front hole. All right, there's only a couple more things we need to do before we can do some testing. Um, just make sure you hook the VEC and the speed controller back up to their uh, plugs that go to the receiver. And in the battery bay, I decided I wanted to widen it out a little bit so that the battery could fit in there this way instead of on its side. Um, I saw that with it on its side it was blocking the air passage too much, so I wanted it to sit lower in the fuselage. So I widened the area where the battery sits. Um, the battery is going to probably have to go all the way to the very front in order to get the CG right. Um, other than that, I also did a little bit of carving in the top of the canopy just so the air will flow through a little bit better. Um, you don't want to block the passage all the way, otherwise you won't get any cooling to the rear of the plane where the ESC is at. Alright guys, I finally made that 5 cell mod to the Funjet. Um, I took that 1600 watt motor that was on the Monster and put it in the Funjet and I'm running off a 2240C 5 cell. It, I uh, checked it and it's pulling 85 amps and putting out about 1499 watts. Um, I got a 7 by 6 sports prop on here. Uh, we're going to see what this thing does. You guys ready? Yep. I don't know if I'll be able to track it, but I'll try. Uh, if the timing's right, I might have to change the timing. <laughs> Where the heck you at? That was, three, that was only about half throttle, man. <laughs> wow. It's so hard to see, man. Thing looks like it's cruising there. Who's got the radar gun? Yeah. Man, that thing's impossible to film, dude. I don't know if I can get it low enough or not, Joe, yeah, but. Man, that thing is hauling, dude. That thing is. Huh? Didn't get close enough. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to get used to this thing first. Yeah. <laughs> Just rip it close overhead, and we'll do the Doppler when we get home. Yeah, that's <laughs> Off the an camera. idea. Yeah. yeah, this is gonna be a Herman Airport experiment to see what the speed is on this thing. I think this place yeah. is too short, man. Dang, I gotta stop going up so high, man. It's getting hard to tell top and bottom on this thing. Yeah, camera can't even focus on it. There's nothing in the sky. Where are you at? Hundred thirty one. One thirty one. <laughs> and that wasn't even a straight on approach, Franco. That wasn't even straight on because you're still farther out. Yeah, Franco hit 131. Man, you keep going farther and farther out. What's up?